the basement dwelling virgin on the virgin murking those try to rearrange my station so we staying on your toes for a swift kiss of death i section out the mic with the scepter in my sight from the microphone stand it's all part of commanding the plan okay we talked about um the great things in the past the equipment the records that you uh acquired over the years quakers the new album featuring 40 40 mcs no 32 32 okay yeah. uh, 32 mcs um so let's go check out the gear the actual tools that you made the music from and with because cool. i know a lot of people would like to check that out sounds good man let's check it out easy up. so yeah the mpc 60 classic machine as used by pete rock premier probably rizzo probably all those cats because that's you know that was the state of the art bit of gear back in the day when all those classic records were being made obviously yeah it's just got the standard set of decks there that are uh, of everyday use um and if i'm going to use an mpc these days it's probably going to be this 4000 that gets turned on every few weeks to uh, to tap out something or tune something or whatnot um, over here we've got uh, a bunch of tape echoes, the old cassette, still rocking the cassette. We were talking earlier about Easy Bass uh, Space Program 1996, which I'm talking about putting out later on, on the Invader this year. And uh, I just basically got the two track, put it in there, recorded it into the computer and did some mastering on it. Did a bit of EQing and it's sounding pretty good to be honest bunch of outboard gear uh, down here like uh, the summing mixer a bunch of old uh, sort of delays and, and effects units that I use and don't use anymore and a little bit of outboard EQ some um, some racked up Neve preamps that all the vocals go through I like to run the, the vocals through a nice signal chain before they go into the computer one of these space echoes, I guess a bit of a story is uh, Jeff gave me that on my first trip over to the UK, the Space Echo 301, um, which is a sort of classic, I guess classic sort of Portishead sound in a way. Um, they, they used it a bit. It's obviously a, a classic dub sound as well and um, just a generally, you know, good fun bit of kit. You know, we've got the, the keyboards over here, you know, classic kind of Rhodes, um, you know, Mini Moog, of course the 808, which is the, the cornerstone of uh, most of the hip-hop that we grew up on. And, uh, you know, you're not really going to replace those sort of things with plugins. And, yeah, the records are pretty much just strewn across the house, really. There's a one shelf out here. I've got two more expedits in the spare room and then uh, another one in my bedroom. I'm kind of out of space in this little crib, so... <laughs> Um, but we do our best to fit it all in. Then, of course, you've got the SB1200, which is, uh, I guess, you know, the predecessor almost to the, the uh, MPC60. It was sort of like some people seem to go with the SB1200 and other people seem to go with the, the MPC60, so it's sort of a divide between EMU and, uh, and Akai there for a bit. They both, had, they both had pretty crunchy sounds, but the SP was definitely more on the crunchy tip and, uh, uh, I guess, you know, a diff slightly different logic. All the different machines had slightly different logic in using them and slightly different sort of process for programming a beat and, you know, even just sampling the sounds and trimming them and all that type of stuff. You've been watching Howie TV, been with the Catalyst in the studio, checking out some of the gear, talking about Quakers, get out there and cop that shit. Uh, thanks for stopping by and, uh, yeah, catch you soon. Peace. <laughs>